international players anthem is a classic record no doubt you would expect nothing less when two of the greatest rap duos of all time appear on a track with that being outcast and ugk as great as the song is there once was a very strong possibility that it almost never happened but before I get any more into the video, I would quickly like to plug that I made a TikTok that you guys should go follow. I'll be posting content on there. I'm trying to get that popping, so definitely go out and support that. And if you haven't already done it yet, go follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. You guys can always reach out and just show me some love. It's all good. The single International Players Anthem was released in June of 2007, but the story for the song starts all the way back in 2002. In August of that year, one of the most underrated rappers of all time, Project Pat, dropped his album, Land the Smackdown. This album will have a song called Choose You. Not a lot of people know that this is originally where the beat for International Players Anthem came from. It would make sense with the song being produced by DJ Paul and Juicy J of 36 Mafia with Project Pat being Juicy J's brother. The song samples Willie Hutch's song, I Choose You. Rest in peace to the legendary Willie Hutch, who actually gave a shout out to 36 Mafia at the beginning of the song. But unfortunately for Project Pat, this same year in 2002, he would get sentenced to four years for two felony weapons charges, dating back to an arrest that he had in January of 2001. He would be locked up when Landis Smackdown was released. Another person who would be locked up around this time would be Pimp C of UGK. He would be sentenced in 2002 after falling behind on the required community service that he had to do after pleading no contest to aggravated assault. In an interview with DJ Vlad, Bun B said that Pimp C showed up for his community service and they sent him to the horse stables to clean horse feces. Pimp C was not having that at all. Juicy J would say this about Pimp C and how the song came together. The beat was on Project Pat's Land of Smackdown album, you know, when Project Pat was in jail, and the album did like 300,000 copies, or it could be gold now. His first album went platinum, but he kept going back and forth to jail, so the second one went like gold. Pimp C loved the song called Choose You. When Pimp C got out of jail, he was like, I want that same record that was on Project Pat's album. We had put that record out as a single at first, but Sony didn't push it because Pat was in jail, so it didn't do anything. Pimp said he wanted that same beat and didn't want to change nothing. As Juicy said, Pimp C would be released from prison in December of 2005. Bun B has said in numerous interviews that Pimp C was a big fan of Project Pat's music. He was one of his favorite artists, so much to the point that he bought pretty much everything that he released. Bun B didn't initially understand what Pimp was trying to do. He had already been down that road before when Pimp C heard music and wanted to use it, but it didn't work out. When Pimp C was released from prison, all he talked about to Bun was how Project Pat had a song called Choose You and he described the beat as attractive. Pimp C was mad because he felt like Sony, who Project Pat and 36 Mafia was under, did not promote the record. As Juicy J explained it, it was because Project Pat was constantly getting locked up. Bun B would further say, when he came home, he was like, man, I love this song and it was a hit and Sony didn't promote that mf -er like they should. That's all he kept saying, that it was a hit record. I was like, there's nothing you can do about that. But he was like, I want to rap to that mf -er. I said, you gotta be kidding. You can't rap to this dude's song. His album just came out. It hasn't been out that long. It was one of the albums that he got when he was locked up and listening to. He said, trust me, I'm going to call DJ Paul tomorrow. So he called Paul and reached out to explain that he wanted to do the song. He was like, man, we got a big budget and I'm going to make sure we break some bread and do the song. They were all for it. Project Pat wasn't tripping. Project Pat could have easily said no to Pimp C, but Pat grew up on UGK's music, so it was a no-brainer for him. So as I said, Pimp C would be released from prison in December of 2005 and would be placed on parole. When he was home, he would reach out to DJ Paul and Juicy J for the beat to choose you. 
What some people might not know is that 3-6 Mafia was originally supposed to be featured on International Players Anthem. DJ Paul has spoken on this and said that Sony did not want 3-6 Mafia to be on the song. By the time it got to 2007, the only members of 3-6 Mafia left in the group were DJ Paul and Juicy J. Sony not putting the remaining two members of the group on the song led to frustration between the two and the label. DJ Paul and Juicy J were a year removed from winning an Oscar and were at the peak of their popularity in the mainstream. They even produced a beat so it made total sense but Sony would not allow them to be on the record which led to Outkast being brought in. This proved to be a great replacement because Outkast along with UGK are one of the greatest duos in rap history. One of the most popular too, especially in the mainstream. Jive Records, the record label of UGK, would call Big Boy of Outkast and ask him if he wanted to jump on the song, which he accepted. He would soon find out that his partner Andre 3000 had already done his verse. But things weren't all peaches and cream though because problems would arise. It's been said that Andre 3000 did not want to rap over the drums of the beat. He only wanted to rap over the loop of the sample. This is why you don't hear drums during his part of the song. Bun B would say that when you hear Big Boy rapping over the song, it's actually his reproduction somewhat of the track. That's why the sample is kind of dropped out over the beginning of it. Andre 3000 not wanting to rap over the drums really confused Bun B. He did not know how the song would be played in the clubs due to this. But Andre is a visionary and his decision to not rap over the drums proved to be the right decision. It really fits his verse and its tone. Just imagine Pimp C rapping just over the sample. It would still be a good verse but it really wouldn't have that oomph to it like it does with the drums. But Pimp C was very pissed at Andre for not rapping over the drums. Jeff Sledge and a and at Jive Records at the time would say, when Andre sent his piece back and had no drums, Chad was pissed off. He was like, F Andre, man. How the F is he gonna send my stuff back and take my drums out? F that. He was going off about Andre taking the drums out. I was like, Chad, hold up, fam. Let's rock it like that because when Andre doing acapella and then when the beat drops, that's when your verse drops. And then you, your verse is going to lift the record up because now the beat is rocking and your verse is kicking. And he is like, all right, Jeff, I want to give it a shot. If it ebbs up, it's on you. Bun B was very surprised that Andre even did the song at all because Andre wasn't really rapping at the time. The year previous in 2006, Outkast dropped their last album to date which is Idlewild. After this, Andre 3000 only rapped over a handful of songs in 2007 and the number just got lower and lower by the year, discounting Andre being very active in 2016. However, Andre would agree to do the song, but he would say that he probably would not do the music video because he wasn't really shooting videos at the time. Don't get it twisted, Outkast were big fans of UGK. According to Andre himself, he would say that it was a no brainer to do the record. I don't want people to get the feeling that Andre was being difficult or anything, but this is the stuff that is said by people who were very close to the situation. We all know that Andre 3000 did end up doing the music video, which is one of my and many people's favorite music videos of all time. 36 Mafia, Outkast, David Banner, D Ray Davis, T Pain, Bishop Don Juan, Fonsworth Bentley, Big Gip, Chameleon there, Alex Thomas, and many more made appearances in the music video. The story of the video is centered around Andre 3000 getting married. Before his wedding, Andre gets questioned by Bun B on why he wants to get married, which starts Andre's verse. Spaceships don't come equipped with rear view mirrors. They dip as quick as they can. The atmosphere is now. When speaking about the verse, Andre would say that he wanted to write about what he thought the phrase choosing meant to him. Of course, choose is the phrase that the sample is built around. I choose you. In his verse, Andre raps about leaving his player life behind for his soon to be wife while his friends tell him to reconsider. Andre does not know why he went to marriage as a topic, but he felt like that was the ultimate version of choosing. The marriage and the reaction from guys and girls were the focus, so he just imagined what his friends might say to him if he were to go down that road. 
his verse would immediately get followed by the best verse in the song to me and one of my favorite verses of all time. If I had a gun in my head and had to rap a verse word for word without no stutter or slip ups, it would be Pimp C's verse in this song. Absolutely flawless. Just proves that you do not have to be super lyrical to get your point across. Trash like the for forty dollars in the club. Up the game, she gets no love. In his verse, he gives his perspective of what choosing is. Bun B would come after Pimp C and he would absolutely deliver with his verse. He would also give his perspective of what choosing is. Seven wonders of the world, world. and I can make you the eighth if you want to be my girl. 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 I say my girl I don't mean the last verse of the song is done by Big Boy. This is when the beat starts to change up and then comes back. Big Boy was the perfect man to end the song. That's like making it rain every month on schedule. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, get your parasol umbrella cause it's gone. International Players Anthem ended up being the biggest song UGK had as leading artist. The song would peak at number 70 on the Billboard Hot 100. International Players Anthem is very significant because it's a big reason how the duo managed to get their album Underground Kings to number one on the Billboard 200, selling 160,000 copies sold in its first week. An interesting thing about International Players Anthem is that there was an idea to form a southern rap supergroup with 36 Mafia and UGK called Underground Mafia. Mafia. Unfortunately, these plans for a supergroup would never come to fruition. Songs like International Players Anthem and Sippin' On Some Sizzurp are the closest things that we'll ever get to that. I bring up 36 Mafia again because their version of the song would end up appearing on UGK's album Underground Kings. This would be the original version, so we did end up hearing what the song originally was before Outkast ever came into the picture. 36 Mafia definitely did their thing. Now when they heard who in the club, DJ Paul bitches chosen up. When they see I'm icing like a slug, then they frozen up. I'm assuming that Sony saw how well the Outkast version of the song was doing and allowed 36 Mafia's version to appear on UGK's album. Kinda wild. And just like that, this is the story behind International Players Anthem. I really like this series where I break down rap songs and tell the history behind them. Let me know some other songs that you want me to break down in the future. Before I end the video, I definitely want to give a big rest in peace to Pimp C. All in all, let me know what you guys think about the video in the comment section below. I would love to see what you guys think about it. I love it guys with all my heart. Peace.